Have you ever looked at a Lego piece and thought that could be something entirely different? This is the story about how that exact feeling inspired me to create the craziest thing I've ever built. Hey there, I'm Adam, aka Ant Bandit, and the story behind this build really begins over a year ago. I was hired by Lego to create a series of stop motion videos for a social media campaign called Brick Eye View, all about seeing the world through the eyes of a minifigure in a first person format. The videos themselves were super fun to work on. There was a friend one, a county fair one, and most importantly, a Lego space video, which was my favorite. I even built a massive set piece for the surface of the moon, which took up my entire studio. Now, one of the perks of doing official animation work for Lego is that oftentimes you get sent free copies of the sets you need to feature in your videos, which is amazing. Who doesn't love receiving free Lego sets? Except when they're sets you really don't want. And for me, that was the case with this set, the Lunar Research Base. Even though I love space, this is just one set I have no interest or use for. So instead of being thoughtful and giving this set to someone who would really enjoy it, I decided to use the parts to build something new. In particular, I was fascinated by these huge new dome pieces in Translite Blue. So I was sitting there trying to think about what to build when suddenly it hit me. The concept of a Lego jellyfish sounded like a great idea to me at the time for two reasons. Number one, I'm a huge nerd for anything marine biology and ocean life. And number two, most of the hard work is already done with those giant translite blue domes making up the hardest thing to replicate for a realistic looking jellyfish. But even with the rough idea of the top of the jellyfish figured out, there were a ton of challenges to overcome for this build. I wanted this jellyfish to look as lifelike as possible while not being based on any specific type or species. With that in mind, I decided to challenge myself to build this entirely using transparent pieces, specifically translite blue to match the color of those dome elements. Now building anything in a single Lego color can be extremely difficult because not all parts come in all colors. In total, there are 840 unique parts that come in transparent light blue, but a lot of these are printed pieces or completely useless for building a jellyfish. But with Brickworld rapidly approaching, I needed to get started. So after combing through the entire library, I placed an order for a bunch of different parts that I thought would be useful to have on hand for the build. My first goal was to create a strong central base that I could attach both the upper and the lower part of the jellyfish to. Thankfully, I was able to find the perfect part, a rare eight x eight plate in transparent light blue that came in a singular set from 2002. Now actually getting my hands on this part was where things got difficult. I ordered it four separate times from different Bricklink sellers and they all sent me the wrong color in trans medium blue instead of trans light blue. And even though the difference in color between these parts is really subtle, I wanted the model to be as consistent as possible. Thankfully, all four sellers refunded me for the cost of the order and I found a German Bricklink seller that was able to confirm and verify the color of the part before she shipped it to me, which was fantastic. I started by building a main support column to attach all four dome pieces to at the top of the jellyfish. Then using the bar attachments at the bottom of each dome piece, I created small assemblies using one by two plates and clips to round out that base of the jellyfish and close off the dome around that larger plate. I added some parts for detail and shaping inside the dome, including jellyfish gonads. Yes, these are what actual jellyfish gonads look like. With the top part done, the next challenge was to figure out just what the tentacles underneath would look like. I knew I wanted them to look natural and flowing, almost like it's drifting through water. So I started by looking for flexible Lego tubes that might work well for tentacles. The only problem was that all these two pieces felt unnatural and rigid and just didn't work for what I wanted. So I went back to that library of 840 translite blue parts and I started scrolling until I could find an idea. And that's when I saw chains. Attaching a bunch of these chain pieces together and grouping them really tightly made the exact unique effect that I was looking for. But I still needed to wrap them around something and find a way to attach it to the bottom of the jellyfish. Then I found this, a flexible transparent piece of pneumatic tubing that came in a singular Technic set from 1993. 
This piece was exactly what I was looking for visually, but it has really limited connection points. Thankfully, Luke Skywalker was around to give me a hand, specifically his lightsaber. And with a little willpower, I figured out I could jam half a lightsaber into either end of the pneumatic tubing, which gave me a very illegal connection point to attach those chains at the top and wrap them all the way around to connect them at the bottom of the tube. The finished tentacle looked really good, so I made some more. It was at this point seeing just how good that single jellyfish looked when it was all built that I decided to build another one, <laughs> because why not? I also started thinking about presentation and just how to display these two jellyfish together. So I built a sandy ocean floor base with two transparent stands that suspend both jellyfish in midair. After many hours of building and many hours just spent searching for the right pieces for this build, I was finally done. So let's take a look at the finished product. Enjoy. I'm incredibly proud of how this build turned out. It looks even better than I expected it to, and it's really one of my favorite things that I've ever built. A few weeks ago, I debuted this build at Brickworld Chicago, which is the world's largest LEGO convention, and it was so great to see everyone's positive reactions to it. I was also honored that this build was chosen as one of five nominees for best creature creation at Brickworld, which is hugely validating and makes all the hours spent on this build feel worth it, but it's really just great to see other people enjoying something you've built. But I would love to know what you think of this build, so let me know down in the comments below and tell me what should I build next? And that's about it for this video. Once again, I'm Adam, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.